Abbott, Hannah. Pause. Hufflepuff. Bones, Susan. Pause. Hufflepuff. Boot, Terry. Pause. Ravenclaw. Harry glanced over briefly to look at his new housemate, more to get a quick look at the face than anything else. Finnegan! Seamus! There was a long, tense moment of silence under the hat. Almost a minute. Hermione, next to him, was shifting from side to side, fidgeting so energetically that Harry thought her feet might be leaving the floor. Gryffindor! Granger! Hermione! Hermione broke loose and ran full tilt toward the sorting hat, picked it up, and jammed the patchy old clothwork down hard over her head. Hermione had been the one to explain to him about the sorting hat, but she certainly didn't treat it like an irreplaceable, vitally important, 800-year-old artifact of forgotten magic, Ravenclaw! And talk about your foregone conclusions. Harry didn't really see why Hermione had been so tense about it. In what weird alternate universe would that girl not be sorted into Ravenclaw? If Hermione Granger didn't go to Ravenclaw, then there was no good reason for Ravenclaw House to exist. Neville Longbottom went to Hufflepuff, Harry was glad to see. If that house really did contain the loyalty and camaraderie it was supposed to exemplify, then a house full of reliable friends would do Neville a whole world of good. Smart kids in Ravenclaw, evil kids in Slytherin, wannabe heroes in Gryffindor, and everyone who does the actual work in Hufflepuff. Draco went to Slytherin, and Harry breathed a small sigh of relief. It had seemed like a sure thing, but you never did know what tiny event might upset the course of your master plan. Potter! Harry! There was a sudden silence in the hall as all whispered conversation stopped. A silence broken by a horrible buzzing noise that modulated and changed in hideous mockery of musical melody. Minerva's head jerked around, shocked, and identified the buzzing noise as coming from the Gryffindor direction, where they were standing on top of the table. This is Dark Lord Mia. Gonna need to fear. Who are you gonna call? Harry Potter! With a killing curse. But it could be worse. Who are you gonna call? Harry Potter! As their music reached its anticlimax, Harry Potter shouted, I ain't afraid of Dark Lords. I ain't afraid of Dark Lords. Dark robes and a mask. Impossible task. Who are you gonna call? Harry Potter! Giant, Giant fire apes. Old bad in a cape. Who are you gonna call? Harry Potter! They were cheering him for a job he'd done when he was one year old. A job he hadn't really finished. Somewhere, somehow, the Dark Lord was still alive. Would they have been cheering quite so hard if they knew that? Harry Potter! But the Dark Lord's power had been broken once. And Harry would protect them again. All those people believing in him and cheering him, Harry couldn't stand to let that be false. And he shouted out the lie that he'd invented because it scanned well and the song called for it. I ain't afraid of Dark Lords! I ain't afraid of Dark Lords! Harry took his last steps forward to the Sorting Hat as the music ended. In the back of his mind, he wondered if the Sorting Hat was genuinely conscious in the sense of being aware of its own awareness, and if so, whether it was satisfied with only getting to talk to 11-year-olds once per year. Its song had implied so. When there was once more silence in the room, Harry sat on the stool and carefully placed onto his head the 800-year-old telepathic artifact of forgotten magic. Thinking, just as hard as he could, Don't sort me yet! I have questions I need to ask you! Have I ever been obliviated? Did you sort the Dark Lord when he was a child, and can you tell me about his weaknesses? Can you tell me why I got the Brother Wand to the Dark Lords? Is the Dark Lord's ghost bound to my scar, and is that why I get so angry sometimes? Those are the most important questions, but if you've got another moment, can you tell me anything about how to rediscover the lost magics that created you? Into the silence of Harry's spirit, where before there had never been any voice but one, there came a second and unfamiliar voice, sounding distinctly worried. Oh dear, this has never happened before.